So spiritual warfare, brother, talk to me. What is that in biblical terms? Yeah, so I mean, uh, definitely spiritual warfare. I would, I would, uh, I would describe it as a, a, a raging battle. You know, that is uh, that is happening uh, between. Uh, I would say, you know, even with fallen angels, to uh, you know, to the angels that have not fallen, that uh, affects and impacts our world. You know. And, uh, and a lot of time it can have this impact, uh, uh, effect and impact even on our souls. You know, that's the biggest thing. I feel like a spiritual warfare, a lot of times is this inner turmoil. Weighing, weighing down the soul. Yes, you know, yeah. for the soul, you know, and I think there's a lot of things that add to it too. Uh, even though Paul does say, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, so this battle's not gonna, you know, you know, that you're going to need something outside of that. I do think sometimes, too, though, our flesh can be involved in uh, bringing us down in a spiritual yeah. world. You know? Yeah, because the battle is against the flesh, too. Yes. Flesh has its wants, its desires. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. So I think that's a big one. Like, I don't think most people, we, I don't think we would think about it, but, you know, if it's like you're going through a season and you're like, you know, man, I want to, I need to study. I got to get in the word more. You know, I got to get on it. And then, uh, you know, as the day goes on, there's this like in your body, just this fatigue and you're like, oh, that's one of these signs, you know, like, oh, man, I'm not going to read, you know, so then like, you just don't, you fall asleep, whatever. And then the next day comes like, you know, some, you know, some, and there may be people, some people who hear me say this, like you're doing the most, but I think those are little spiritual battles too, like, and our flesh is involved in this where it's like, oh, I'm tired, bro. I can't even focus. I'm not going to read you know like and so it's like yeah there is you know i think there's these spiritual things that can take place and then just even within our our own uh flesh that, that, that kind of that can happen this a, is this is this what you call being that you're in the front lines of it as well is this a daily battle or does it happen sporadically or it really doesn't have a frequency is it something that just happens the closer you walk with god or yeah that's a great question no I think about, and I feel like it's still kind of, I, not kind of, I feel like it does remain very true. A uh, mentor of mine, uh, and he's been pastoring, I don't know, almost 30 years, um, but uh, uh, well, like leading his own church, he was a pastor and before that at another place. But um, uh, one thing he told me, I remember when I first got saved, he said, uh, he was talking about spiritual warfare and he goes, son, uh, the spiritual battle never lets up and I never forget the picture because he was like you know as Christians we're never off duty you know and he was like um, you know he was, he was like, he's like you know he's like you got to think about soldiers who are at war he was like they eat when they're eating it's not like they take their weapons down and eat everything's on them and they're eating and then I just remember this visual so much more he goes so when you at the barbecue he's like I'm locked and loaded you know I remember <laughs> like and I just remember True. being like he was like, as Christians, as long as, like, until we get to heaven, we don't have gun holsters. He's like, we don't put these up. We're, yeah. we're ready at all times. You know, like, there's no holster. We, we, we got that. We're ready at all times. So uh, I would say, yeah, it's a daily battle because, um, you know, I feel like for me, Satan uh, has eternity. So I feel like he gets at us daily, slowly through these little bitty things, and then it, it can build. And then there's other times where he's like, you know, a demon or whatever, like, oh, I want to scare you. So they just, poof, they show up right there. They pop up. Yeah, those things kind of happen, um, you know, where that, those are major, you know, but I, I think a lot of time, too, we don't acknowledge the spiritual battles that happen on a daily. Um, so yeah, I, I think some of us dismiss it. I've dismissed it myself sure, and just sure. laid it off to regular fatigue. Hey. Yeah. You know, it's, and, and, and you can tell because it gives you that, that, uh, that feeling of, not wanting to pray because you're too tired or you had a plan of reading, you know, a couple pieces of scripture and all of a sudden things get complicated. And sometimes it is us too. Sure. You know, sometimes it's just laziness, yep. Yep. you know, on our part. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah. When do I mean, you, what is the goal of these fights? You think I, I, you know, I know that it's to separate us from God. Yeah. yeah. I know it's to make us fall. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I think that's the whole main point of it. And the reason I would say that 
is uh, is uh, because of um, and Job. You get the back. You kind of get a backdoor scene. And uh, let me uh, get to it really quick. I just wanted to read one line. I just thought of, from your question, like, what is the goal of it? Um, yeah. So yeah, this is Job one six. It says, "Now in the days of the uh, now in the days when the sons of man came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them, and the Lord said to Satan, from where have you come?'" Satan answered, from going to and fro earth, walking up and down on it. And Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth, blameless and upright, who fears God and turns away from evil. And then as Satan says, does Job fear God for uh, no reason? You have put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side. You bless the, uh, the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land but stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out. And so like, that's kind of like this back scene, but uh, at the end of the day, the whole point was like, well, have you thought about Job? He's blameless. He's faithful to me. He loves me. And then what does Satan go like, well, dude, it's because you hook him up. You know, and you know, but I tell you, if you didn't protect him, he'll curse you. And so uh, it's like, yeah, it, building off of what you were just saying, man, I think that's exactly it. It's our faith, you know, like yeah. the whole point of spiritual warfare is to uh, wreck it. And if he cannot wreck your faith, then at least try to weaken it and to get you to uh, distrust God. Because I mean, you know, even after he took everything the first time, uh, you saw Job stay strong and his wife, and yeah. she was kind of like, you know, dang, this is horrible. It's hard for me to see. Why don't you just curse him and die? Then, you know, it's kind of like, so he got a yeah. goal a little bit there with her, you know. And just as a oh. side note, I don't want to give his wife flack. Everybody be hating on her so bad, but, you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. But, anyways, I, but I, honestly, I, oh, that's a perfect that point that you pointed out right there. It's true. You know, Job. Went, underwent what I would never want to go through, you know, and it's true. It's, it's, it's kind of testing our faith as well. Yeah. And, and the Lord uses that battle to strengthen us. Yeah. And it's not like you were in a Job like situation where you lost your kid, but I mean, bro, the battle with your own daughter is like, phew, with your yeah. daughter, like, bro, out of nowhere, this whole thing, you know, just yesterday, uh, there's a person on our staff who, um, you know, like everybody's kind of talking, it's just random. Everybody's been saying like, Man, it just feels like it's been weird lately, right? We don't know. Yeah. What I've been like, hearing that. Yo, so I'm like, here's this lady. She came home yesterday and uh, her son, you know, he's a he's young. He's like nine or 10 years old. And uh, oh. she came home yesterday. He said he had a headache. He went pale and then fainted in front of her. Oh, yeah. wow. Yes, and rushing her to the hospital and all these things. So it's like, you know, and, for, and you know, for her, it was like, wow, this is such a testing, trying time. The doctors don't know what's happening. His vitals are normal. Like, what is this? You know, what is happening? And what just happened to my child? You know, and doctors can't, you know, and so it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, I feel like, yeah, it's trying to shipwreck our faith because it's like doctors can't explain. Because if you could find it right away, then it's like, well, all right, cool. Well, that's what this is. And it's like, nah, there's, there's nothing. Well, the, the truth is, you know, spiritual warfare can manifest in different ways. Yeah. It can manifest in different ways. There is viruses that may or may not, you know, bring you down like COVID with the fatigue and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But where, when the, the knowledge of man is limited, we only know so much. You will only ever know so much. So that's why we should always cover ourselves and our loved ones with the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and spiritual warfare. Like I've heard so many different things about it. Like people to actually talking about war. Oh, I'm going to war with. The yeah, I, I don't I don't it. It is spiritual warfare. It is a war against yeah. us, but it's not 
us that fights the devil. It's God that does it. Yes. Our our yes. job is to stand our ground. Yes. With the armor. Yes. Hey, I was about to say that's one that was definitely on my mind. Like, yeah. Yes. Because exactly. I because I hear that a lot. You know, you hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know, uh, I'm warring with the devil." No. No. You're. That's not your. That's not your place. Yeah, you're our place be- is to stand our ground, hold our faith, and let the Lord do the battle. Yeah, you're gonna lose. It's like I don't care what nobody say. Like when you start reading the description of the angels in Ezekiel and in Revelation and the ones you see in Daniel, some of those descriptions are scary. And just think, yeah, some of these angels were top angels that have fallen. You know, so yeah. it's like they. Some of them probably look like that have those same things like so it's like bro this is a being that is much more powerful than you think about it we can't even live out the spiritual life god had to take up dwelling inside we don't of us. we don't you even know? understand it fully to be you know honest with you brother there's good theories out there there's but the only one that knows the exact truth is the lord yes and, and, you know and for us to sit there and say oh well you know with the sword of truth i believe it is right in Ephesians, the sort of truth. And yes, you use scripture, you use truth, you use God to rebuke and rebel. Yes. Yes. But it's but you're not the one attacking. You do not attack, you stand your ground. Yes. And even and, and even, the devil will flee. Yes. I love that because even you know, even as like with the sword of truth, I remember looking this up uh, years ago. Uh, they talked about like uh you know because paul he's chained to a roman uh guard at that time or whatever you know uh like a uh ephesian or whatever yeah he's in rome and so um but they talk about the swords that these men had and they talk about the different kinds of swords and so you know one was like a big like you just uh, like like melee. a broad sword yes. yeah yeah you go in and just woof, whoosh like way like this is not that kind of sword and so uh that's why i think it's very interesting is because it's about precision you know right and, uh, and so i think like you know when he's coming at us the way you spiritually fight he said this the sword of the truth you know so it's like you know you you're you're using the word you know to combat these spiritual uh things and uh another thing that as you were saying because it's like it's not on us that popped in my mind i don't know if you researched this i can't remember seeing it but uh but like the seven sons of skiva you know it's like here were these men so this is in acts uh 13 or uh but but the story i think it's acts 13 maybe it's 16 but the story is is uh these young priests so there's a priest who has uh let me see if i can at least because the story is so wild like it's like (laughs) it's like for real that happened hold on hold on i can't remember it hold on seven sons well, while you're looking for that, where do you think it all started? In my mind, I think it started with the serpent in Genesis, sure. the devil himself, the first temptation. Oh, yeah. That's, that's where I believe the beginning of it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think in the moment that Satan fell, that's when it happened and took place, you know? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um uh, because uh, so we don't know exactly when he fell, you know, um, but we do know it has to be during that time of creation, um, or maybe it was before, you know. But we know it's um, um, it's got to be before a, a man was created, you know. Um, so I, I feel like there was a spiritual attack and rebellion that happened then because you know in luke jesus says i saw satan being shot out of heaven like a lightning bolt sure. and uh and and uh you know what is so with the like, other fallen yes you know like the stars coming up so it's like uh there was this war that even raged you know it seems like or a battle that took place uh before man was on the spot you know and then his woman's up there on the scene now then that's when he talks with them and then the fall happens. So yeah, I feel like that spiritual warfare takes place, um, you know, as early as yes, is in Genesis. And I mean, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, you know. Honestly, I, you're right. I think, it, I think it started with probably the other angels that, you know, Lucifer recruited. 
Yeah, there had to. I feel like there had to have been something there. The fact. Yeah, that, he must have tempted them. You know, so, because you know, it wasn't just they, him that was cast yeah. out. Yes, that they all came down. They saw. I just True. want something had to have taken place because it's like the scriptures talk about uh, how the angels of men. You know, the angels they they sang and worshipped God as He was creating everything. And so it's like I just wonder, like, because in uh, what is that Isaiah uh, Isaiah twelve? I think it is the I will statements. You know, I will make myself like the Most High. I will. So, uh, so one part of me is like he's looking. He watches this and goes, I can do that. And then all the angels, everybody who was created by him, everybody who saw him do everything, he gives a speech and goes, we can do this too. Like we can be creative too. And I just. I don't see that being a quiet conversation in heaven and the fact that he was shot out like a lightning bolt. But then too, I mean, he was shot out like a lightning bolt. It could have been God spotted the rebellion. They, you know, the other ones had the rebellion. He was like, y'all gone, you know? You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, even when we talk about, I think the last one we were chopping up, we talk about like Megiddo, how there's like this big buildup. And then it's like, boom, you know? So... Uh, yeah, I would say definitely, you know, definitely had to have been in the beginning. And I think there's something to note in that too, um, is how calm it is, is, uh, he shows up and, and it's just exactly what we were saying earlier, seeds of doubt, you know, well, did God really say that, you know, yes. and it's calm. it wasn't like she is hand to hand combat fighting with the devil, you know, he's, you know, like showing up burning things and nah, it's very, a lot, I think that's why I think a lot of times it's very slow very subtle it's like that idea you know how people say how do you boil a frog you know put them in the cold water and then over to just heat it up and, and let it slowly eat and before you know it, the frog will stay in there until he boils you know wow so, uh, i think that's how this spiritual world takes place yeah it's like low key and you know gradual yeah you know let me that. ask you something how 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 being a being a pastor you must have been you must have had some contact with that. I myself have, you know, it's for me, I felt it in many different ways. I felt it gradual. Yeah. You know, whether it be with doubt, like you said, yeah. whether it be with hesitation for prayer, yeah. you know, and when I feel those feelings now that I've grown spiritually, I know I need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. How have, how have you felt it? How has it affected you being that, you know, you're preaching the word of God, you're a prime target for it too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, bro, I feel like um, I feel like the scriptures talk a lot about the renewing of the mind. I do feel like there is a, even Joyce Meyer, I don't know if you remember her, you wrote that book, yeah. Battlefield of the Mind, you know, and whatever, whatever we say, you know, but, you know, I, uh, still, nonetheless, I think there is a major battle in the mind with preachers. A lot of time, we're alone a lot. You study, yeah. you know, you're studying by yourself, you're by yourself a lot. You know, and because now we're 21st century, we're not like Martin Luther and them, whether we had to go grab books and, you know, you go and look like, now nah, you're online, you're studying and then boom, and your ads on the side is, you know, this girl in a bikini, like, hey, <laughs> you know, cheeseburgers and checkers. You're like, what? <laughs> so, well, you know, I feel like there are even those little things. Um, uh, and, and to, uh, you know, depending on the person, because I mean, uh, in Ephesians, you know, Ephesians 4, when he says, like, you know, each is measured with this gift of this grace of faith, you know, I think, you know, we all have faith, you know, we all have it, we all have faith in Jesus Christ, but, you know, you ever notice there's some people that are like, you know, hey, God just told me to go, you know, I'm going to Zambia, you know, and it's like, what are you going to do? I don't know yet. You know, like I'm just getting on the plane and going, you know, and then there's another one who's like, yeah, I feel like God has called me to be doing that. So I'm going to start fundraising. I'm going to do that. You know, like there, there's different measures, but um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of time for me, it's not necessarily like whether or not a God is real, but I do think it's a, a lot of distractions. You know I me, mean? I'm busy. Oh, yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of things like that. Like I'll carve out time to study and then boom, this meeting or this thing comes up. And now it's like, well, I got to go do that. And then, you know, I'm not, I haven't like studied on my own and really soaked in and spent time. And so uh, I think there's those little things that happen. It's just like, you know, pastors, he tries Levels. to, I think, yeah, it tries to boil. Levels them like and waves. Yeah. <laughs> it's both. Boil them like a frog. Cause I mean, it's like, 
you know, I think about, I could just walk up and, and like, oh, yeah, did the schooling and studied and all that. I could, a lot of time I could just walk up and, and just preach, you know, mm -hmm. and then people could be like, oh, that was great. And, not, and then I could just be like preaching in the flesh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not at the time of God. None of that. I think that's what happens to a lot of like guys a lot of time. Uh, something that I was like, whoa, you know, like, you know, his theology and the stuff he did, whatever, you know. But like a uh, Benny Hinn, you know, I don't know if you saw he. Benny Hinn, yeah, you know, wow. Have you seen how he had his recent confession and everything? Have you seen all no, this? No, I haven't kept up with him. I've watched him before. My mom was is really into him and Charles Stanley and stuff like that. So but I've Benny seen, Hinn. yeah. But Benny Hinn, I mean, he was major, like prosperity got all these different things, and there were scandals that broke out. Amongst yeah. And uh, so recently, and you can find us on YouTube, Francis Chan, who's a friend of ours, uh, he's a pastor and uh, he was invited to a lunch that Benny Hinn spoke at. And, uh, and one thing that Benny Hinn said was, for years, I, I have not been close to Jesus. I care more about fame, money, my friends. My at God. least he notices it. So that's what I mean. So he came out and he confessed it. He, and, uh, and, but that was it. It was a slippery slope. He'd been preaching for years. And he said, I have not been close to Jesus for years. And so, uh, and then that's when he said, you know, we don't, he said, uh, men don't talk about it. He goes, you know, like our gifts don't leave us, but I do think there is a time where God does not trust us anymore with our giftings. And that's when Benny Hinn said, I believe God no longer trusts me, you know? And so it's like, yeah, it's not like his gift has gone away, but he's like, you know, I don't, I, I believe he does not trust me anymore to, you know, be this carrier of the word. Because the standard, you know, you know, First Timothy and Titus, they are very clear to be a leader. And so, uh, and, you know, one of those things like above uh, reproach and all that kind of stuff. It's like, right. you know, so, and it's like, but it was one thing after another where he's like, yeah, I just don't think you trust me anymore. But I think it wasn't like Benny Hinn, like one day uh, didn't care about planes and car, like one day didn't care about all that stuff. And then the next day he had all that and cared about it. It was like slow. No, and I, and believe it or not, brother, that's that's one of the things I've seen. Like I've seen certain pastors, not all, and I get it because the closer you get to the Lord, yeah. the more these attacks are yeah. frequent, stronger, yeah. Yeah. and embody different ways of attack because he's yeah. trying to find that that stronghold to get in that foothold. Yeah. Yes. And uh, and the reason why I ask is because you're you're preaching the word of God. You're a representative of the Lord to try to assist the followers, such as I. Yeah. So it's got to be hard at times. And I, I heard something from Ravi Zachariah that I wanted to address earlier before I forget. Now it just popped back in my mind. He said in one of his sermons, I can't remember which one it was. I don't know if it was the potter's hands. It was one of those. Yeah. And I sat back and now that I'm stronger in the faith, I understand it. Yeah. And he said that the worst time for anybody spreading the gospel or spreading the truth, the loneliest time yeah. is when you've been on that stage or you've been in that crowd or you've preached from your heart with the spirit and you're done and you're and you go back to your room to rest that is your loneliest time oh it's the, the and he says that is correct he said the attack is stronger than at any other time because you've just spent all of you yes because the word of god is so strong that it spends it it it, it, it de energizes you yes you yes. know it, it you're spent yes yes and actually, I mean, there's even research out on this, the pulpit, um, mag uh, pulpit research and uh, this. I mean, these are stats from years ago, but uh, I remember they talked about uh, preaching and the act of going up there and speaking in the different services was the equivalent of working out for eight hours. And so, I bet. yeah, so you have this draining on your body. So your physical body is drained. You know, you're mentally have been speaking for a while. You know, and uh, I think though, I do feel like my spirit man is full after I preach, you know, but physically my body may be tired sometimes. The flesh. And, yeah. Yeah. 
And then uh, I think that's when Satan starts attacking or, you know, spirit ourself or to the dark spirits, whatever, you know, can begin to attack the preacher after all the preaching is done. Everyone goes away and then they'll stop. And, and that's a war good. tactic. That is a war tactic. Yes. Yes. You know, stand yeah. back, take the blows. It's in boxing. You stand yeah. back, you take the blows. Yeah. And once your enemy, who was it? Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah. That was his technique. Yep. You'd beat him up for about six rounds if you could last that long. I know I couldn't probably last two, but oh, bro, yeah, my goodness, he, he'd, take, he'd take a beating, and then at the end, he'd give it to you. Muhammad yep. Ali. Yeah, I'm about to say Ali, yeah. Ali. Yep. He'd take oh, a pounding. That is a, I love that illustration. Like, yeah, yeah, when we preach, we are battling him, and he's taking it, and then when we're done, he's like, all right, so, so. Wow, oh, that his, is a, his his guard is down. I'm gonna catch him with the left. Oh, right, right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I love yeah. that, bro. Damn. It's 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 the art of war, brother. It's you you want your enemy to be spent or distracted or yeah. or uh, even unaware, ambush. Yes, yes. That's why. I and think I think, and I think, since you're preaching the word and you're giving your all and you feel fulfilled. What better time? Because you lower your guard. You okay, Father? I've given your word. I've, I, you know, I felt the spirit. The spirit spoke through me. I'm fulfilled. Okay, okay, okay. And you relax. And that's yeah. where he comes in, and just like the snake. Yep. 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 Little things. Oh, I can do me now. All right. I, I preached. I was the holy man. I can do me for a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. So that. That's the that's the stuff that is like, you know, that's why I feel like, yeah, he hits preachers all the time. I think preachers, they hit him with a spiritual thing even, like a comparison. That's the thief of joy. And a lie is like, bro, you need a, God has gifted you, specifically you, your, made, made you the way you speak, the way you think, to use those gifts and don't be looking around. I think that was one major for uh, preachers too, that everybody comparing, trying to, you know, and, and I mean, you know, you see it in Corinth. They were doing this comparing preachers and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, bro, you know, that kind of thing. I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely would say it rages heavy and, uh, and, and yeah, and in different seasons. Like, um, you no, know, just in the sense of those attacks, how, like, you know, you can come at you with comparison and those different things. And uh, so I, I just kind of, Anyways, that's why I feel like I always think about what my mentor has said to me uh, after I preach in those different things is because it's like now, now the battle's raging, you know, right. uh, you know, on a Sunday and wifey wants to go down to the pool, you know, nah, battle's raging, both guns blazing, you know, <laughs> but, um, uh, but I do, I do, I was thinking about this too, though, even as pastors, sometimes, you know, uh, like, uh, not that a lot, like, like a, lot, a lot of guys do this, but it's like, bro, you know, we're just as dependent on the spirit as everybody else, you know? And, 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 and I think sometimes that's what happens thinking about, you know, the preacher we had talked about before, I think buddy was like relying in his flesh and was just going to use this uh, as like speech. So I think like, yes, there's this slow thing that Satan does. And then sometimes boom, like a big one. Um, but it's like, yo, it's not to be, played with this is what i was talking about earlier i was thinking about this with the seven sons of skiva these are men um like doing things in the flesh like listen so this is uh, acts 19 11 it says god was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that he touched um that touched his skin uh, also carried away to the sick and helped heal their diseases and rid them of evil spirits so it's like Amen. you know so that you see this thing happening but here's very interesting. Then there are some itinerant Jewish exorcists who undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you, I command you, right, by Jesus whom Paul proclaimed. So they were saying there were these exorcists where you like coming in and using the name of Jesus. These are, but it's like they're spiritual people, you know, like, and here they are using this name of Jesus. I think this is interesting. Verse 15, it says, but the evil spirit answered, Jesus, I know, Paul, I recognize, but who are you? And it says, and the man in whom the evil spirit and who had the evil spirit leaped on them, these seven men 
seven men, this one man who had the evil spirit in him, leaped on these men and mastered them all, overcame them all and overpowered them all so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks and fear fell upon them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. But uh, I, I was using this to say like, here were men trying to use this spiritual platform in a very fleshly manner. And, and, and like, oh yeah, I'll just throw the name of Jesus on it. Like how you were saying earlier, I'm in this battle, I'm in this combat. And it's like, well, that's what happens when it's you, you know? And, and, and so it's like, yeah, you need to really have that relationship with God and, and depend on, um, you know, the power of his spirit, you know, like when you start to think about spiritual warfare, you can get into all of it, you know, like uh, there was a young boy who was mute, who was deaf, could not speak. And uh, the scriptures say it was a spirit that did that to him, you know. Yeah, so, I've, I've read that, an unclean spirit, deaf yeah, and mute. Yes. So it's like you, you can go through and start looking at all the lists of what the unclean spirits are and all these things, and it can you know, it could get you, you know, bog you down so heavy. And I used But let me ask you something. I heard a theory. Yeah, I heard yeah. a theory that unclean spirits, uh, we know it's not the dead because the dead, when they die, they rest. So that's out of the question. I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard uh, Nephilim, disembodied Nephilim that have died, demonic spirits. I've heard, of course, that it's the fallen. So to me, it could only be the fallen. I don't think it's the Nephilim either. No, no. Uh, yeah, I, I do think uh, I do think the Nephilim, uh, part man, part angel. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think uh, they were destroyed in the flood. I do. They were gone, and, and, and no. What they're saying way. is, what they're saying is, the Nephilim that have died have become these unclean spirits. That's oh, what they say. Oh, I yeah. see. Oh, yeah. That once no. the Nephilim die, their their uh, soul, I guess, or their spirit or their essence, is what an unclean spirit is. Oh, I see. To me, I think it's the devil and his fallen, his yeah. minion. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, if that is a yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the ones who initiated the Nephilim, how the sons of men were going down sleeping with these women. Those yeah. guys are still running around. That's an unclean spirit. So, like, yeah, I just would say it's fallen angels. Those are the unclean spirits, you know. But I, And that's what I mean. They're so, I think they're, I bet you start to look at it, you could get into the thousands of it, you know, because there's a lot yeah. of them. Where, you like, know, I, I did some research on it, and I came up with a few. Yeah, there's a lot, like, bro. You like foul spirits, those are the ones of unclean thoughts, immoral acts, depression. There's lying spirits, there's spirits of deception. They work miracles, which leads some to believe that yep. it's the work of God when it's not. Yep. The deaf and, deaf and dumb evil spirits, the spirits of infirmity, these evil spirits afflict the physical body. That yep. one I've I've had firsthand. Oh, sure. Spirits of oppression, yep. that happens to everybody, I believe. Yep. Yeah, spirit of seduction, which you can go into all those types of yeah. demons, uh, Lilith, and what's the other one, Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the evil spirits of divination. That's the people that think that they're talking to dead people when it's actuality. You know who? Demon. Yeah. You know it, and and it just goes on and on. That you know it jumps into demonology. Yeah, I'm not too versed in that. You know, but so that's quite a bit. That's what I was going to say. So that's the thing for me, I feel like, because yes, even in demonology and angels, you know, there are rankings, there are hierarchies there. So there's all that, you know, and even uh, is that Corinthians, the principalities that we face, you know, he talks about all different things. And so uh, one thing I feel like, you know, just, you know, from counseling and, and, you know, because I see, I remember my first, I was thinking about it when you were saying my first interaction, um, I, you know, I was like, yeah, actually, there's probably a lot of little things. Like, there was a ton of little a things. Build up. Yeah. Major, but I remember my first day on the job, the first time, like, this is my, like, I'm a pastor paid now. I'm not, like, uh, you know, working at the airport still or working at the shoe store and then going preaching. Like, no, this is all I'm doing now. And so um, I remember my first job, I remember they, uh, one of my minors is uh, counseling. 
And so uh, I got to this church and they're like, yo, we heard you got a counseling degree. We got a young boy in here. You know, he, he you know, somebody got to talk to him and you got to talk to him. And I remember walking to the room, getting ready to do counseling. It was a little boy, bro, six years old. And he had two grown men, you know, the Spanish pastor and the other outreach pastor. And he flung them across the room like rag dolls. You know, they were trying to hold them. And he threw these men, you know, and this is my first day on the job. First time. I was wow. like, well, I was like, bro, I do counseling. This is like exorcism right here. Dog. You know, like. Yeah, and, deliverance. Like, yeah, I had thought about that, like those, those those major things and, and, and but you know it's one thing i noticed uh from pastoring and dealing with different spirits and everything um you know even if it's like you know you ever have a moment where you interact an evil spirit and you're t- talking with them you know it's like bro they're all about lies and confusion and all that so it's like for me you know it's like i just study the truth i know the truth so well so that if anything pops up contrary contradictory to that you know I don't need to necessarily be versed in like what kind of demon I'm dealing with per se, you know, mm-hmm. I know the truth that will then, you know, because yeah, you may run across somewhere. It's like, well, I'm not educated on this. What's going to happen. I can't, you know, I can't go to God for this. And it's like, bro, prayer, prayers is saying no matter what spirit you're facing, you know, right. There's a truth, no matter what spirit you're facing. And so, uh, that was one of those things, you know, uh, I, I think I said it before, but it's an illustration I use all the time of like that. Uh, the gentleman who years ago was excellent at sp- spotting uh, counterfeit bills. He was a part of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. And I wrote a book on this and everything. But people asked him, someone asked him, you know, what made you, how many false hundred dollar bills did you have to study, you know, um, so that you learn? Yeah, so that you could yeah learn it all and point them out. And he said, I never looked at one false hundred dollar bill. He said, I never looked at one at all. He goes, what I did was I studied the real hundred dollar bill so well on every single corner. Uh, he was like, so that like I knew it hands down so well, so that anything popped up that was false, I could just pick it out right away. Because he knew the truth of that hundred dollar bill, you know. True. And, if you know the truth, you can't be lied to. It's true. Yes. Yes. And so, because I think a lot of time, you know, especially like with students, I try to encourage them in that light of like, bro, I know you got to build up that muscle to study the word and everything. And it may not be as exciting, you know, um, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? Because, because yeah, if you get too heavy. It's but I think, I think that goes along also, not necessarily just with spiritual warfare, because there's the flesh battle as well. But when spiritual warfare, I think that's the de- the devil's biggest temptation and one of his biggest weapons. You know, we've been watching all these movies and everything else and, and video games. And if it's not high intensity and life and death and, you know, the truth may, the truth is actually, in my eyes, better than the lie. And I've learned to do, and I've learned to do that because I used to love action movies. I didn't really care for any of the other stuff. Oh yeah. But when you know the truth, it becomes more entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 believe it or not, I think that's a lot of people just being um, not necessarily just indoctrinated, but also spiritual warfare. Yep. You know, it, the devil makes sin look seductive, and this yeah. and that, and. Yes. You know, and, and the flesh, unfortunately, tends to pull to that side. Yes, it's, we, and that, it's like, because like, that's our flesh, that our flesh, uh, it's its natural bend. Like, I, you know, it's like, it's natural for me to bend over and touch my toes from the front. It would be yeah. unnatural for me to bend over backwards and touch them. And it's like, you know, the spiritual life to me is the, uh, God's calling you to do the unnatural. It is natural yeah. for me to be hateful and vengeful and and to have bitterness in my heart or to, you know, go hold the grudge. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, yeah. Hold a grudge, porn, cheating, lie. That is natural to me. What is unnatural to me is going to be um, not looking at that, not cheating, not. Uh, and resisting. Not having a grudge. Yeah. Forgiving someone who wronged. I just was sitting with a guy today who he got cheated out of $25,000, you know. Oh, wow. Like, you know, I had to forgive this man. That's unnatural, bro. Back in the day before I knew somebody, bro, I got saved 25K for me. Nah, we pulling up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we pulling up. So, uh, 
Uh, oh, that's my alarm to pray. Lord, thank you for this interview. Man, I love Manny and what he's doing here. In Jesus' name, amen. But, um, amen. Uh, uh, no, bro, but, um, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm getting on track with myself, but yeah, I do feel like, uh, cause there's a lot that you can go through and study, but, uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, if you want to start somewhere, you know, I encourage cats like get heavy, heavy, just know the truth. Believe it or not. Up. And the problem is once you fall down that slippery slope where you find sin to be seductive or, or entertaining. Yeah. You start accepting more of it. Yep. It's like yep. a disease, like yep. any disease. Yep. You know, and a lot of people don't understand unforgiveness is a big one. Major. Yeah, my, my heart got broken and, you know, I can't forgive her for that. And yep. no, the point of forgiveness is not just for the other person to redeem them, themselves, uh, to redeem them. Yep. But it's also redeeming yourself because once you let that baggage go, it's out the door. Yes. And the yeah. problem with unforgiveness is like a poison. If you hold it inside, you know, I can think back of many trials and tribulations I've had in my life with, with people. And I've sat there and I've held the grudge or I've been so hurt, oh, yeah. you know, and, and you hold it. Yeah. You know, you're not wishing them bad, but you're holding that unforgiveness like, oh, I would never. Oh, and yeah. the problem with that, it slowly devours. Yes. Yes. Dude, I, you. It does. I was gonna say. I mean, I, I experienced this firsthand. With um, you know, we went through an ordeal with a church where um, just you know it was time for us to uh, go our separate ways. I think theologically they were in this camp. Theologically, I was headed this way, and you know, and dude, things were ugly. I mean, they, I mean, dragged our names through the mud, you know. And wow. in my flesh, I'm like, bro. And then the, like the worst part, the my biggest sin for me, my mom talked about it. Uh, she's like, you know, be careful with your wife. She's like, because, you know, you can defend her so much that sometimes it could be sinful, you know, like, right. you know, like, cause you, yeah, yeah. Like somebody, you know what I mean? Like, I can't lie. Like I like the whole Will Smith and Jada thing is like, you know, one part of me as a husband is like, yeah, dog, if you talk about my wife and she don't like it, it is what it is. We got to talk, you know, but, uh, you know, so it's like, so for me, these people that drag my wife in it too. And so, you know, I harbored this like bitterness and unforgiveness towards them. And, um, you know, and then one day, uh, I think we had this conversation, but I can't remember if we said it or not, but I remember like talking with my wife, like, well, man, I forgive them, but I'm good on them. I don't want nothing to do with those people. And I'm good. You know? And then uh, my wife, you know, she's hurt by these people too. And uh, she just looked and she said, you know, she's like, but could you imagine if God is like, Hey, I forgive you but we good. I don't want nothing to do with you or none of that. I'm going to let you into heaven, but stay in your corner. Like, let's not talk. Point. Yes. And she's like, she's like, you know, this is our chance to be the most like God because our sin is offensive to him. Correct. And, and, you know, he forgave us, but I, you know, it's one of those, but dude, it, it, it ate away at me. It ate away, you know, in my study time and my thinking, you know, I'm like, you know, what are these people going to do? You know, they even it's when it's hard, to, like track us down. <laughs> yeah, bro. And, and there was no, um, you know, there just was no health in that for me at, at all. And then it was like, I noticed we, you know, God really allowed us and worked in our hearts to really just forgive and, and let him have that, you know, the battle is the Lord, you know, um, yeah. it, 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 it released so many different things. And, and, uh, and also too, I felt like I was hitting a spiritual lid, you know, because you got this unforgiveness that you're harboring. And uh, so I just feel like, yeah, so you can't grow. You can't grow. It like oh, stunts man. your growth. Yes. And so I felt like I had this year of how you just to use your illustration, a year of me drinking poison, expecting these people to be hurt by this. And uh, I'm drinking poison, you know? Yeah. Because um, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. Yes. It helps the other person move forward too. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes. We all sin. And it's on daily. Let's be yeah. honest, or, yeah. Yeah. you know, but it's, you know, that unforgiveness, I, I've learned it all too well, you know, being young, you know, I had an old school father that didn't explain things. It was just punishment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of things after sitting down and talking with him and, and now being a father of three, you know, you, you kind of see it and you kind of understand it. You're like, wow, okay. Yeah. He just didn't know how to express it, but I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I carried that unforgiveness for a lot of my teen years. And honestly, it was wasteful time. Mm. Just wasteful. Mm. You know, and and it deters you, it changes your path. Yeah. It takes you more towards the bad guy side than it is. It's a path of darkness. It's not a path of light. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And I mean, you know, I think that's it's a that's one of those slippery slope boiling the frog yeah. we don't think about yeah. yeah you know like it was like well that's major you know like and so and it's like we know the we know um because we know the freedom when we forgive you know and i just think too uh, especially when it comes to forgiveness that's got to be the biggest spiritual warfare of them all in the sense yeah. of because it's that's the whole point of the gospel is that god forgave us of our sin therefore you right. should forgive you know but it's like easier said. He fulfilled, than yeah, he fulfilled what we could not fulfill. Yes, yes. So, Let me ask you something. How can you recognize when you're undergoing spiritual warfare? Because there's, I pretty much have a handle on it. I know that it's sometimes sudden, sometimes it's big, sometimes it's small. It'll start with doubt while you're praying. Yeah. How do you, how do you, what would you tell, your, what do you tell your followers on recognizing it? Yeah, so in spiritual warfare, I think the number one thing I always tell everyone is fatigue, you know, just not the natural things too. You know, I'm like, hey, you got to make sure you're resting, you know, uh, your brain is made up of, uh, I can't just remember the percentage of water, but it's like, hey, so make yeah. sure you're getting, there's some natural, little natural things, make sure you have some water within you, um, like your brain, that your brain is healthy, your brain is good. And then uh, I, I always, I always, especially when people are heavy in the war, I ask them uh, how their how their quiet time is. You know, I think that's one of those things. You know, uh, that we don't think about often. That it could be like, yeah, you know what? I was killing it for a month, and I I, I slept off for two weeks. Well, I think I read like you know last week, and then you know once or whatever, and then it's like, yeah, it was raging. You know, and so I think that's one of those things. It's like. Yeah, it feels so like regular and like, but I'm, I was like, yeah, bro, if your Bible reading falls off some, I think that opens you up. And uh, I do think things like, uh, yeah, being just the fatigue, you know, being tired. Uh, if your brain just mentally is not a good space, if you're mentally exhausted. Confusion, yeah. Yes, yes. And then too. Believe like, it or not, like I told you, I think I told you last time we spoke, when I first agreed. You know, like I told you, this show yeah. wasn't really my idea. It was yeah, something yeah. that I feel was brought to me by the Lord. Yeah. And when I agreed to do it, I had three days, brother, where I had this fever, all this stuff. It was not COVID. I was clean. Yeah. It was, it, you know, you could say it was probably viral because it lasted three days. Mm -hmm. But brother, it did what COVID couldn't. It actually took me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fever. Yeah. I had 101 fever. COVID didn't do that to me. Uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't get past the fact that I was sleeping about 18 hours a day. Yep. I, you know, I didn't feel hungry, mm. you know. And the funny thing was, this is how I know it was spiritual warfare. Because I was praying every day a little bit. But every time, since I was so fatigued, I would pray. And then I would just go off to la la la. Yeah, yeah. But on the third day. I said, no, I got it. I, I don't feel this is right. I feel something's up. So I got on my knees and I forced myself. And the yeah. moment I was done praying, brother, gone. Little by little gone. It wasn't just yeah. instant, but it was. Yes. And then by the afternoon, I was fine. I was me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, amazing. Yes. And you bring up something big with that, too. That's one thing I. Uh, and you said it, you know, that's one thing I'll say too uh, with people is like, you know, like like after people uh, do baby dedications or after someone gets baptized, you know, or someone's about to get baptized or they're about to have the baby dedication or they're about to get married or whatever. I tell them like, now's the time to be on high spiritual alert, you know? Oh, yeah. Expect the attacks. You know, I got a couple right now that want to get married. And uh, their marriage is coming up and, you know, that groomsmen drop out, you know, and so, but it's like now it's causing the stress with her because she's been thinking about this since she was a kid. And, you know, as guys, we're like, yeah, you know, we're okay. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever you want to do, man. Like, really? Silverware is a big deal, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, but so uh, you know, I, I I I talk about those kind of things. Like, man, you know, just be prepared. Yeah, you're getting ready to get married. I tell the guys and girls, like, don't be shocked if somebody, you know, that is, you know, your type. You know, I remember my mentor used to always say, like, if Satan knows that you like corned beef on rye with a touch of mustard, like, he's not coming at you with a bologna sandwich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's yeah, like, of course. Like, yeah, so it's like, if you're about to get married, don't be surprised if the finest thing on this planet, you know, comes straight at you and it's like, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, whatever, like. Be on the guard, be on guard, you know. Yeah, or, temptation. Yeah, or like and hey, sometimes and sometimes it's even more subtle. Like I used to do I used to be I I worked for Miami Dade County. I was a fleet coordinator. I worked, that's basically what I did. And it's high stress, it's transportation for the entire thing. So yeah. Oof. Oof. my thing where he used to hit me a lot was anxiety. Yeah, bro. Yep. Oh yep. I had so much. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And worry and, you know, sudden loss, you know, oh, my God, this fuel station went down. What do I do? Can I get a vendor out there in the next couple hours to fix it up? Because if not, I'm gonna have to reroute. Mm -hmm. It's it's craziness. It is. Yeah. And when I go back and think about it, you know, at the moment, you're not thinking about it. You're just trying to resolve the problem. Yes. But when you look at it, you know, it could very well be spiritual warfare because the thing is the devil's not going to sit here introduce himself and sit there and say i'm coming for you yes he, he never does that yes. i think one of the greatest lies the devil passes on is that he doesn't exist yep yes 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 so that so that way you know you you and and like you said that matter of fact it could it could it could it could, it could, it could build up I felt the suddenness of it. You know, it's it's pretty intimidating when you think about it and when you feel you start feeling it in the spirit. Because yeah. once you get to a certain level with the spirit and you know the basis of truth, because I'm by no means a scholar. Yeah. But you know, but you once, need once you dog, get to that, <laughs> bell dog, yo. I'm you trying, brother. Every day, scholar, every day I try. You are a scholar, bro. Yes. Heck yeah. Raising kids. Right. You Love feel you. it. You feel it. You feel it. You literally yeah. feel it. Like, mm, this yeah. isn't, this isn't me. Yeah. And then you, and then you learn to discern the difference between the flesh. Like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 This yeah. one's not, a, this one's not on Satan. This one's on me. Yeah. yeah I, I got to push a little more. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, I want to, you know, cause that's like, cause my wife does depression anxiety big time and it's like sometimes spiritual a lot of things too and there's other things we can bring about on ourselves like just in the natural there are little things where it'd be like you know you haven't been sleeping very well and it's been caffeine the whole time and so now you're tired going into this job you know and you know and, and you wake up and maybe you're playing the bible but you're thinking about work you're not even yeah you're like boom, 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 boom. i gotta yeah you know, and believe it or not, you know, life has been a distraction. One of the things I think one of the best things that ever happened was not the actual disease of COVID. It wasn't that. No. I think one of the best things that ever happened was the fact that everybody had to stop. Yep. Oh, and honestly, I, I believe from what I've heard and I pray that has awoken a lot of people. And I don't want to use the phrase awake because awake. Yeah, the world. They've used it for something else. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. think it's it's brought about a revival where people are actually realizing what's important. Yep. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, and the preacher, that, and, was, that was the blessing of COVID. And, and I believe it's like that old school phrase, stop and smell the roses. Yes. Because even myself, you know, with with my career, I found it hard to study. There was times I was working at 11 o'clock at night. There was times that, you know, my wife and kids went to the beach and I didn't, I couldn't do it because I had a project yeah. or, I, or I had to follow up on this. Or, oh, yeah. And honestly, brother, one of the best things that happened was that, I believe, it, it was for me, not yeah. the side effects of it, but the actual stopping, taking a moment, 
thinking, reflecting on what's important, what you've missed out on. Yes. And yes. self-improvement. Yes. Because the Lord is self-improvement in its own. The truth yeah. is self Making it better day by day. Yeah. 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 I, 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 that is so true. I do think about uh, best. Yeah, I, I can more like not happy about the disease or families. Or family no. Or the, because with it, like, with it came a lot of great losses. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. For those oh, wow. people, my heart goes out to them. But I think it's something that needed to be like me. I, you get so caught up in the rat race. Yes. That's, that, that's what I was going to say was like, I love that. Yes, exactly what you're saying. Like, yes, it was sad. People lost family. But I loved it because it, it made everybody stop. It made every Christian go and relocate themselves and examine. Like, am I believing this? Re-stunner. re -stunner. Yes. You know, like find out where you're at. I can't go to church, so am I going to study this week? I'm at home with the kids. Like, what? You know, what are my priorities? Where am I gonna? So that I, I, let me let me open up the Bible. It's been two years since I opened it up. Yeah, I remember yeah. going to work because I used to yeah. get up early. I worked in downtown Miami, so I used to have to wake up real bright and early. Sure. I prayed on my way to work while I was driving. I couldn't dedicate that time. And then when I got home, it was seven o'clock. Yep. My my daughters were in bed at 8, 8.30. Oh, so you got you know, to get ready for bedtime. What little bit of energy you have left, you're trying to play with your kids, spend time, yep. make a moment, yep. and then they go to bed, you lay in your bed, Knock and you're so, you're so physically tired that, you know, the only thing you can think of is sleep. Oh, so, brother, let me ask you something. Spiritual warfare, does it come... Because I've also heard this question asked a lot. Is yeah. it due to sin, unforgiveness? Or is it even when you're walking right and at that particular time? Because we all have sin all the time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it is it brought on just by the sin? Or or even if you're righteous for that moment, does it still hit you? Yeah. So I mean, um, I would say sometimes spiritual warfare is brought on because of the sin, but um Job was very clear. He was following God, minding his business, loving Jesus. And these attacks just rained down on him, you know? And so, and there's no explanation per se, because usually like how we were saying earlier, I will tell people sometimes before an event or something big is happening, like with the podcast, God's putting this on you. This is something from God. And I was like, you don't expect this, you know? But as far as we know, I mean, kids were at a birthday party, you know? And they were all together at one house at a birthday party, you know? So uh, for Job, it wasn't like there was something big. I don't know if he had a big business project going up. We know he was a wealthy man, you know? Um, but it just seemed like, nah, he's just following God. And, and the attacks came strictly to, uh, like I was saying earlier, like to weaken his faith. And so uh, I think there are a lot of times too, like, cause that'll happen with my wife. There'll be some spiritual battles or wars raging. And then she'll begin searching herself. Like it's gotta be sin in me. It's gotta, you know, just how Job's friends did. Bro. They said yeah. That, like, you sin. yeah. You sin. It's gotta be sin, bro. You sin, you know, somewhere even, down the line. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, what's the one in, uh, I think it's in John or whatever, when they all ask, cause the man who was, uh, I think he was lame or whatever. And they said, well, whose sin was it? His mom or his dad, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, well, it's just so God could be glorified. Get up, you know, like, <laughs> and so like, uh, yeah, I think too, that there's some of that as well that, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, that's why I'm like, oh, I wouldn't, especially like, you know, when you're following the Lord, you know, it, it's good to try to put a finger on something, try to get a pulse on thing, you know, to find out, okay, it's this thing for me. I'll spiritualize in this area. I think there's something to be said, you know, in Romans 8, when he says, like, the spirit himself utters groanings on our behalf. Like, when we don't, you know, we don't know what to say and we don't uh, know what to do in those situations. So I think, you know, that's why I think a lot of times when the battle is raging and you're following God, you know, like, you know, of course we got sin and that's how you're saying, you know, but it's like, hey, you're following God. You're not out here wilding. So it's like, you know, you know, you talk to God about, and just know the Holy Spirit is interceding on your behalf to the Father on this battle because he knows, he sees it. He knows what's really going down. And so, uh, you know, it's like he intercedes uh, for us in that. And 
in that light, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, 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 I feel like I'm just kind of talking, lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can, can, can spiritual warfare be transferred? Like, for example, when your wife is going through it, can that affect her as well? Um, I think it, like in my personal experience, I think it has, or maybe it's just a vibe too. Yeah. Yeah. Any like, thoughts on that? Like, are you saying, so the question is, is can like, uh, like if I'm troubled and I have anxiety and, you know, not necessarily vocalizing because sometimes we vocalize it. And yeah. We don't notice it. And we made a mistake on our part by either dismissing or offending but I'm saying, like, there's been times where I felt a little anxiety, yeah. especially in the beginning of COVID with the lockdown, yeah. like how we were talking, where you feel trapped. Yeah. But you're not lashing out. You're not really showing it. You're just, let's say, thinkative yeah. or kept to yourself. And of course, your, your spouse is going to pick up on that. Right. But do you think it, those same unclean or demonic spirits are affecting you know, so it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, not necessarily I, like a transfer, but like a reaching to make it worse. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be some sort of effect around on everybody. Like, I think about these spirits, like the one boy who was throwing himself in the fire. You know, it's like, you know, that had to have had an effect on everyone around him. The dad was not possessed, you know, but uh, it had some sort of spiritual effect on him that here he is in front of Jesus, like, bro, we've done it all. What can you do? You know? And so uh, all those things where it can affect us, not necessarily that it could leap onto us or something, but uh, actually even in that, I don't know, because I, you know, like, like I, I remember with a couple, both of them unsaved and uh, the lady was possessed, you know, and, uh, and neither one of them are believers. So the spirit of God is not living on the inside of them. I do not believe a believer can be possessed by a demon, but I do believe a believer can be oppressed by a demon. But uh, here are both these people unsaved, and she has this demon within her, bro. And uh, it manifested itself twice, you know, in a counseling thing with us. Um, you know, she brought that was crazy. The eyes rolled back, hissed like a snake. It was very interesting. And but then later on, the husband started displaying. Who was not saved? You know, started displaying and having. Yeah, something. I know. I know if they're not unsaved, but like, I would imagine so because if it affects me, which is the leader of the household, it's got to affect. affect. It'll affect your family. Like I think about. I can't remember. Oh, that's what I was gonna say way earlier. But uh, especially like thinking about pastors, but I think about yeah, as a man, as men, you know, and being the heads of our house, like the scripture that says, uh, if you if you uh, smite the shepherd, you know, the King James version, yeah. smite the shepherd, and the sheep will scatter. And I think that is that that that's a uh, so it's like yeah, spiritual warfare. I'm gonna try to get at you, you know, or I'm gonna try to get something around you. I want to try to affect you, like how Satan could not get at Job. I'm gonna try to you know, lash on to everything around you to have this effect on you, you know? Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely would say, like, yeah, it, it, yes, it can have this. There is some sort, it does have some sort of effect. I don't, I don't, yeah, like, I don't, I don't, like, I do think sometimes, like, I remember, actually, man, like, I remember one time, uh, and this is, like, a crazy season in our life was about to happen. We were in California, and going through craziness with this church and all this stuff. And uh, and I remember the the day before everything went really bad. Um, uh, I, I, it was definitely a spiritual warfare raging, but I felt like God was also using this as a heads up. But my wife was had, had this, out of nowhere, had this dream. So we're both sleeping. She had this, this dream that so, felt so very real where she goes into this old cathedral She's down in the basement of this cathedral. There's a bunch of uh, these figures sitting at this table and they're all marble. And then they all slowly like start turning and look at her. And, um, and uh, like these two like kids, like these like little like demon, like they're like the little, like little I guess like midget demon she saw or whatever, you know, yeah. they're like, like but spooky looking. And I guess they were rolling towards her and they started oh, getting, wow. they're rolling towards her. 
And, um, you know, and then this little, this little girl was like, I have all the power here to my wife and these things. Like I've got the power. And she was like, you know, the power belongs to Jesus Christ. And then, um, uh, she said like, you know, she's like, and I saw they had you, you know, and they took you away from me. And so that very same time when she was having a dream, I had this dream out of nowhere. I got snatched up by these demons <laughs> and was dragged out of this church where people were seated at this table. And they looked like marble creatures. And, uh, and I was then dragged outside and, you know, uh, the spirit of God, like, I don't know how to explain it, but in the dream, boom, shot down these two demons. And I remember then running back to the church, like, I need to go get Aubrey. And as I'm headed back to the church, I woke up in a cold sweat and Aubrey woke up in a cold sweat, both exactly at the same time. And it was like, we were in the same dream. And I was like, I had a dream. I saw like this table. She was like, I saw this table. And there were marble figures at the table. There were marble figures at the table, with me, you know? And uh, she's like, and they took you outside. I was like, I was taken outside. And, that, and so I felt like that was like this, uh, it was something that was going to be effective on me as a pastor and boom, you know, here's my it wife. It was going to affect everything around. Yeah, yeah, you guys are one flesh, so. Yes, so, and that, bro, that was a, that was a I don't even know if I could, like the story, just trying to explain it doesn't even really do it justice, but it's like, you know, that was something that impacted us both. And, you know, we woke up that morning and boom, you know, it was a Sunday or whatever at that church and, it was an ugly war, you know, like, wow. yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's just a warning too. Yes. Yeah. So I felt like, you know, he warned us, he gave us the heads up, uh, excuse me. It was three, three little people. And there was three people outside that were involved with like dragging us through the mud and all that, you know, it was very, that was, that's the, that was like one of, that was the first only time I had something like that. That was like, Whoa, where my wife is having a dream and I'm having a dream. We're and it's and it's similar. Dream. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah, they're the same. I think that was more of a warning, being that it was similar. Yes, yes. Maybe you know, it was the Lord letting you know this, you know, you're gonna get these trials and tribulations. This is what you're gonna feel, this is what you're gonna see. You know, sometimes dream interpretation. I've had dreams where I sat back and I've been like, okay, I don't get it. And not yeah. the same scenario happens, but something right. similar to that effect where it makes me snap back and go, oh, okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, well, and I mean, and let me clear too, I'm not one of those, I'm not like a big like dreams guy too. Like, you know, every time I'm not I'm, either. Like, oh, it's from God, this is it, this is the one, you know, and then, you know, like, you know, but uh, that one was just one that to me, yeah, I was, you know, definitely was a warning, um, you know, for that spiritual battle that was ahead because it was ugly. I mean, here we are in Miami, <laughs> you know. So um and glad uh, to have you. God had his path yeah, cut out for you, brother. Let's go. God let's had go. his path cut out for you. That's yeah. all it was. Yeah. For whatever reason, you weren't meant to be there. And that yeah. might have been it. It might have been his warning to you to let you know, like, look, it's time to these go. Things are gonna happen, but it's because I don't want you there. Yep. And that's exactly what it was. It was time to go. I needed to deal with those two on my own. She dealt with one. And in real life, I had to deal with two people coming at me. She had to deal with the one. And, uh, and but I just remember in the dream, like, I got to get my wife and get out of that place, you know? And, uh, and yep, I got my wife and got out of that place, you know? So sometimes it's like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, definitely, yeah, I definitely feel like a lot of stuff. What are, what are the weapons we have as Christians for when we feel these things? I know, well, it's obvious, prayer. Prayer always works. Yeah. But what would you suggest? Like, what would you? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, especially as far as these, I think number one, I can't stress it enough, is knowing the truth, you know. Um, uh, for spirit, that's a major weapon we don't think about it. even you know I'm sure we'll hit it right now but like you know Ephesians the sword and so um, uh, it's like yeah that that's gonna be major for us having that word and knowing that word I even think about when Jesus says in John 17 17 sanctify them in the truth your word is truth and so it's like sanctifies me and set apart looking more and more like Jesus and so it's like in order for us to look more and more like him, and I feel like to have more spiritual victories, we've got to be in the truth, you know? So I don't think you can, uh, you know, 
get into that. Especially in Miami, you got so many different backgrounds and, you know, mm. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's like, uh, nah, 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 bro. You have the spirit of God within you. You've got to start with the word of God. Build up your spiritual man. You know, God is talking to us. I always say it as a joke to be corny with people, but I'm like, you know, you take your Bible and go like this. It's got a mouth. That is God talking to you, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so I'm like, you know, let him talk to you and then build up your spirit, man, on the inside of you. Because, you know, you ever had it where you've read something, studied something, and then you've been in a situation talking with somebody. And, and it comes with, back. Yeah, it came right back. That is not, that is, that is, that is the, that spirit, that's, that's the Holy Spirit using that tool. You know? and, and so uh, I think that's one that's major. Prayer warriors, you know, major, you know, you gotta, of course, the prayer is major. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like those are really like your key, key, key components because he says, you know, we're not ignorant of Satan's schemes. We're not ignorant of his devices, uh, towards us, but I just feel like every single time you see any sort of spiritual battle or anything going on, it's the person is then clinging to this truth. You know, when Job lost it all, all he could say was the Lord gives, the Lord takes, and, you know, he went to the altar, you know, poured these ashes on his head. But it's like he went straight to the truth, you know, like uh, Adam and Eve, you know, her truth at that moment in time with no Bible like we have was what God said, you know, to combat the lie. So it's like, which is, that's the word, that's the truth. God speaking, you know, you turn it sideways in some mouth. And so uh, that's one for me, I, you know, and I know even when I talk with students, they hate it. Like, man. I want something else, dog. You know, there's not like prayers I can do. There's not candles or something I can set up. There's not like, like a chain I could wear. There's not. It's like no, bro. Like those are, you know, those are all. Those are lies. Those are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. So it's like I, I would say, yeah, those biggest things is is having the word within you, and I mean, um, yeah, you know, I feel like Ephesians gives us the playbook of how to battle you know so and and when you walk in spirit you do not fear yeah and that's why i tell a lot of people i said the number one thing and the hardest thing is to surpass or bypass that fear yeah you got to learn to put that in the back shell and yep. trust in the lord yes because when you trust in him that's when his full strength is on you Yes, bro. I really think that the, the, I feel like that's what Satan wants to do to us is plant those seeds of doubt and deceive us and yeah. really get us like really make us like, because I like with my wife, like uh, she like she can be in her head. So she will take a problem. That's what makes her such a great scientist and a problem solver because she'll take a problem and look at it at every angle. And it sounds like even with you. Mm -hmm. You know, bro, running everything in day, like, okay, you know, you're a problem solver. And so uh, when those attacks and things happen, sometimes, like, you know, you can start, like, digging into it. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, like, I noticed that with my wife. And, and, um, and I'm like, you know, bro, like, yeah, you may not be able to get the pulse on it, you know, but I think that's the point is to get you to, like, dwell more on the lie or the confusion as opposed to dwelling on the truth. Yeah, and he'll feed you that little cardinal truth with a bunch of lies. Yes, bro. Yes. He'll feed you that truth. You'll sit back. You'll go, okay, yeah, that's truth. No yep. problem. Yep. And the problem is you don't look at the rest of it. Yep. Yeah, like it's a go back to the garden. No, he's like, oh, like, what? Oh. when she's like, you know, he's like, yeah, just have a peace, you know? And then she's like, well, I mean, and he just goes, I mean, but did he say, like, I mean, you, hey, you could have a piece, you know, like, what is that? Yeah, come on. And I just think, like, that's it. It's like, okay, he's trying to acknowledge. Well, he said something, but he didn't say that, bro. You know, like, but he's going to acknowledge, like, okay, he said something, but it's not, did he say that? And then what's she doing? Well, I mean, yeah, he said we can't touch it. It's like, well, he didn't say that, you know? And so now here you are, you know, off in your own uh thing there you know and so um yeah i think about the, the subtlety have you ever heard this book it's called the screw tape letters yes isn't that c.s lewis it is 
Uh, it is. I haven't, I haven't read it yet. That's a, it's, a, it, it's a good book, and it is one that, like, after each chapter, like, ooh, it gives you the heebie-jeebies. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I because I was thinking about subtleties, bro. I know we gotta. Uh, I know we got time, and, bro. I would, I, cause I almost want to read this lot. Nah, let me. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Let's, I can't find that book. Really That's quick. a spare movie, brother um so the whole thing on screw tape letters he's just kind of giving a picture of like uh these demons who uh uh he's like kind of it, it's not like biblical biblical but he's like you know he's done all the study on angels and demonology he's written a book on it it's phenomenal and so this one is just kind of like a figurative to help people get the picture but um one of the things he says in there he says, uh, he gives this picture of a atheist, a well-known atheist, and uh, it, um, oh, bro, I want to find that. Because the line, I'm just like, dang, that joint is gangster. Keeping your reality is best. Uh, teach them. Okay. So it's like, a, it was like, a, it's a, the letters is a, it's like a senior demon, like a high-level demon talking to a demon in training. And so what the whole thing is, is this demon in training is, uh, is working on and to, uh, is doing all the spiritual warfare and battle in his life to wreck his faith. And so the senior demon is to him about what he needs to do, like slowly to get this guy off balance, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, there's one, uh, um, bodily position makes no difference yeah this is the one i think this is the one uh yeah so so uh the 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 son the the little demon in training he writes to the older demon like hey this guy went to church you know and now he's starting to question you know what do i do here you know and so the demon he is he's but of course it's all figurative and everything it's not real these aren't really talk about but it's kind of given this picture this guy who studied it and he gives this picture and he says uh you know he, he talked about how he goes you know you got to stay cool and calm collected get get them in their natural ways and he goes uh i had an atheist who one day was in his study um uh was thinking about he started to he was questioning uh with evolution like whether or not like what maybe that doesn't make sense they don't have maybe god could be real and he's like i did not panic you know I did not panic. And he goes, uh, but he's like, you know, you got to get them in their natural state. So he goes, at the very least, they could be persuaded that the bodily position makes no difference in prayers. So he's like, oh, where you get on your knees or that? Uh, oh, wait, no, this is the wrong one. Bro, I did all this thing trying to find it. And, uh, but I'm trying not to waste all this time. But anyways, he says, so this guy, he started questioning. Uh, he started questioning whether or not God was real. And he goes, uh, and he goes, you know, I did not panic. Uh, he goes, I did not panic. Uh, I didn't go crazy. None of that stuff. He goes, I got him like I always normally do. And I made the alarm go off so that he could remember it's lunchtime. So he says, this guy is sitting there. He's a well-known. Yep. And so he goes, and so he goes, so he's thinking maybe God is real. Bing. The alarm goes off. It's lunchtime. So, so he got up from his books. He walked outside, he saw a bus, a little girl walking in the street, and he goes, this is reality. There's no way that God could be real. And he goes, and he is now safe in our father's house. You know, talking about hell. And so it just was like one of those things. Yeah, it's so impactful. I wanted to read, I want to try to find it, but it was one of those things that's like, yeah, that's how he does it. Very slow, very subtle, very low key these different things yeah, and, he's got to because if he brings too much alarm yes. you're gonna figure it out you're gonna you're yes. gonna sit back and go wait a minute what was that yes and what was this and it's like and this atheist you know i mean of course this isn't a real person whatever but for the sake of the story it's like this guy what was he about to do go look at the truth you know right. and it's like how, how did he get him off the truth or you need to go eat it's lunchtime it's been a long day you need to eat and he you walked out Made the stomach gurgle a little bit, you know? Yes, you know? And believe it or not, how many times do all of us go through that where we're reading the Bible and we tend to get sleepy or we're yeah. reading the Bible and an alarm goes off or reading the Bible and 
we hear something. It, yep. Oh yeah. It's subtle. It's always oh. subtle. Oh yeah. Because oh. everybody in the world at this point has heard of evil and the devil. Yep. And it has to be subtle. Yep. Because if he comes out and shakes your shoulder, what are you gonna do? You're gonna freak out. And then you're gonna sit there and say, okay, that had to be. And what you're gonna do right away. Uh, hit, darkness, the Bible. Darkness, it, hit the Bible. Hit the Bible. You're gonna run yeah. to the light. You're gonna yeah. get scared and run to the light. Who there's a guy, uh, there's a guy, I can't remember the dude now. And he's like, uh, he's like, you know, I'm not a Christian yet, but um, he's a, he's somebody big in Hollywood, uh, but he's like a comedian. So, but he does well, got money, been behind the scenes, seen a whole lot of stuff. And he goes, uh, and he goes, uh, I remember they're talking to him and he's like, you know, I'm not a Christian. And he goes, but I do believe there's some sort of spiritual out there, spiritual, like good out there. He goes, because I know for a fact there is evil out there and demons out there. And he's like, I'm not a Christian guy, you know, but it's like, here he is big in Hollywood. And he's like, no, I know for a fact there's evil. There's got to be a stronger power than this, you know? And so, um, and it's like in Hollywood, you know, they sell it. I think it was Sammy Davis Jr. that people quote when he went to young black uh, actors and comedians, like he said, it to Eddie Murphy and stuff like that. When uh, he goes, man, if you think about it, he's like, you know, Satan is just as powerful as God. You know, that's what they try to sell people. And this is like, what they teach in Hollywood, you know? And so, um, uh, yeah, anyways, I just think like, it, it, it's like, it's trying to get us away from that, from that truth, you know? And so um, uh, I feel like, yeah, those are the subtleties. That's his biggest, the biggest tool he wants to get out of your hand is the word, you know? Right. Uh, and and, and um, because it's like, yeah, there's a lot of power in there that's going to help you. There's a lot of power in there that'll uh, keep you- Simply the focused, name. Keep you grounded. Simply the name. Yeah. You know, how many people have used the name? Yeah. Yeah. A little belief in the name. You're casting stuff out. Yeah. You know, and it's true. The best way to actually get what you're looking for, which is our fall, make it subtle. Yeah. You bro. show yourself the devil appears in your living room. The first thing you're going to do is, oh, my God, where's my Bible? Yep. I got to study. I'm about to read. I'm about to pray. I rebuke this. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's totally different game changer. That's why. But if people... it's if it's slow and gradual and subtle and where you start confusing it with maybe your own thoughts. Yep. Yep. You know, like uh, like uh, I've had people ask me, oh, I, you know, how do you think the devil attacks? I said, in every which way possible. Yeah. I said, yeah. haven't you even had a thought cross your mind? That was so atrocious where you sat back and you go, wow, did I just think of that? Yep. Oh, Could yeah. very well be because unfortunately our heart can lead that direction. And, you know, the only one that can purify the heart is the Lord, but there's plenty of times it's not. Yeah, yeah. Those you know, it's attacks. the whispers, the whispers. Yes. Yes. And what better way to make it think than it's you? Yep. Yep. You know, and even what you, I was thinking about what you said earlier is like brilliant. It's like, you know, I think one of Satan's biggest schemes is teaching his trying to say like, he's, I'm not real. You know, I'm not real. I'm not real. Yeah. 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 Because then it's like, oh, it's just life. It's just, I'm living it. We die. That's it. You know, and mm -hmm. bad things happen. I'm not going to attribute that to dark spirits, you know, uh, you know, I'm keep not, you from know. keep you from repenting, keep you from praying, keep you from learning the truth. Yeah, those are all things that contribute to your fall. Yes, I feel, and I feel like he's got. It like, does. It doesn't have to be the home run. It could be the little RBI get into the base. Yes, and I and, and like you know the Bible talks so much about renewing the mind, and and I think about it particularly with us as Western Christians. You know, on Eastern, it's very family oriented. It's very, everything's kind of fluid. Things are, you know, you. I th of, uh, and our problem is work, 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 work. Yeah, We're yeah, very yeah. work that hungry work culture. Family not culture. And then, like, even just like uh, sometimes too, like with um, truth, you know, I think Eastern kind of culture, you kind of can experience it too. And I feel like for us here, we're so, because Western, we're so heady. We're part of the alignment. It's like, it's un unlocking your thinking. 
And so you ever notice like how in other countries there will be spiritual battles, wars like openly happening all the time. And then here in America, it's almost, it's like you, it happens, you know, but it's almost like low key, like here he's trying to go like, well, I don't exist here. You guys, are, because people are trying to reason it away anyways. Like, nah, that's not Satan. I just, you know, I got a, I got a bad headache or, or like, it's not like spirit of, uh, it's not something like uh, dark spirit or nothing. It's just like, I had a bad lunch or I, you know, I, I, I went to this place. That's all it was. Like you try to reason it away. Like he doesn't exist. And I'm like, yeah, bro, that is, that's the, that is the uh, perfect lie. That's the secret sauce right there. You know what I mean? It's it, 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 it adds to your guilt. It adds to your burden, believing that you can't be forgiven. It adds to the fact that it pushes you away because you feel soiled. It's a yeah. lot of things. Yeah, bro. Oh. But no, yeah, just like thinking about the tools. I know you have this on there. Um, I don't even want to talk about that a little bit. But uh, the armor of God, you know, putting on the armor. Uh, I, because it's like, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be said when he says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, you know. So it's not like, you know. Yeah, you're not about to, yeah, yeah, you're not about to box a demon. And if one did manifest itself in front of you, it's like, we just saw one beat up seven grown men, you know, like, like, this is a real thing. This really happened, you know, don't make it like just some Bible story. This is an arcade book. Like, those people really existed and they really got beat up, you know, dramatically by one demon possessed man, you know, so it's like. Yeah, you know, so I, and sometimes like, you got to see it to be true because a lot of people, there's a lot of skeptics out there, brother. I would say that's what I was going to say. I, uh, that's another thing, too. I think in Western culture, that's, uh, I feel like because we are so heady, you know, like in, uh, you know, Harvard, remember that, where, how they had the three book on their uh, thing, they have the three books, you know? And yeah. so remember that one book always remained closed because it was like, there's some stuff that just belongs to God we won't understand. And uh, because those were all reformers who started those great schools, all the Puritans or whatever, when they came here. Puritans. And uh, yeah, the Puritans when they got here. So they started these schools, you know, like if I ever had the money, I would send my kid to Yale because that's the school that Jonathan Edwards was a part of starting, you know? So, really? yes, yeah, so at Yale and that school, they don't, they don't talk about, they don't want nothing to do with Jesus like that. Some of the best preaching lectures. And they happened at Harvard, Yale, and this was by guys like Phillips Brooks, you know, Spurgeon would go, oh, I probably broke up. Can you say? Uh, yeah, you broke up. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. But like, anyways, like, yeah, those great, those, these schools now that we would consider like a liberal, it would be like, yeah, liberal school, not really rocking with God, stuff like that. Um, these were godly places at one point in time, and some of the best uh, lectures on preaching and everything were given at Yale's, Harvard's, these places, uh, by the Phillips Brooks, I think went to Yale one time, stuff like this. You're gonna need a- uh, He's support. trying hard. You know you froze for about 30 seconds there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, snap, bro. Spiritual warfare, dog. <laughs> He's try they're trying, they're trying, brother. Yes. So let me ask you something. Have you seen, have more of your followers reached out to you regarding more spiritual warfare recently? Yeah, because, yeah. It, it, you know, it's just, I don't have a following or anything like that. But like talking to people, you kind of get the gist and people are yeah. noticing something yes. a little different. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah man. I, yeah, I would definitely say. And I feel like, too, whatever I'm about to, whatever I'm getting ready to preach on, study on, even if it's like, you know, uh, the next day, you know, like, um, I, I um it, it seems like God will always bring me through. Yeah, whatever that subject is, it's happening, you know. And so, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while, you know. And and so it's because it's like it's in the, you know, amongst everything else floating on, you know, it is. But like, it's one of those things like, yeah, I know I'm going to be talking about spiritual warfare. And I just found it to be interesting, you know, the past two weeks, you know, from old to young, you know, talking to me about like, spiritual wars you know man, i haven't been able to sleep there's been these different things you know um you know this young guy like i'm trying to see it's about god man and this girl she just showed up like by my car boom boom she's fine you know all these different things you know so i, I yeah 
I definitely feel like, you know, people have been experiencing it heavy. You know, I even talked with a gentleman who uh, he had a family member. Uh, so they, you know, it was a difficult time and, you know, finances are getting even worse for them. And then, uh, you know, they had a family member get vaccinated and pass away three years, uh, three days later. And, uh, and he just was like, man, here's this battle. Here's this war. Here's the, and it just seemed like everyone's talking about spiritual warfare. Like, like I see it everywhere. Like talking with my neighbors, you know, I, I know I've had an increase for a while, yeah. you know, and just talking to family members, it's been crazy, brother. It really has. I and say, how was, I was going to say, yeah, like you feel like you've been noticing that or seeing that, like even with, cause I was thinking about with the podcast and getting this set up. I'm like, bro, I'm praying for you, dog. I can only imagine, especially on subjects like these shedding light and bringing truth on things as I feel like, you know, Satan and the kingdom of darkness would like to, you know, diminish, you know, and like, so, like, like today, it's really has been a mission. It's cut off four times. You froze for like about 30 seconds. Crazy. You know, and we really haven't had these issues lately, no. well, at least with the first one, you know, yeah. it's odd, yeah. but yeah. hey, the Lord will guide us through. Yeah. And I mean, it just is signs that you're doing the right thing. You're in the right place. That's how I look at it. You know? Yeah. Like I said, brother, there's so many things. There's times that I've felt constant loss problems or anxiety, you know, temptation to sin, thinking back of, yep, yep. you know, being doing old stupid things that you've done. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Lack of sleep, lack of motivation. And sometimes you take it in as yourself. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking that way? Yeah. And sometimes it is. Sometimes yeah. it is. Sometimes we allow ourselves to fall into our own holes, but yeah. sometimes it's not. Yeah. And okay. those subtle things, you know, fall, as followers, as believers, we got to learn to start pushing those feelings to a side, knowing that they're not of God and yeah. getting into the scripture and praying yeah. and liberating ourselves. Yes, man. Yes. Cause I, 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 yeah, I feel like I am like repeating myself so much and banging the drum. I'm like, yo, the word lit, it does have everything we need. Cause I even like when my wife, when the depression, anxiety is, and she's like, I don't know if this is spiritual. I don't know if it's me running this over and over again, thinking about where we're going to live or whatever, you know, Miami's expensive. Yeah. You know? So like, uh, and one thing is like all the time, we always talk about uh, Philippians. Uh, when he goes, oh, whatever is true, honorable, noble, just, pure, righteous, like think on these things. He tells them, think about this, you know? And so I'm like, you know, Mookie, you know, it's like, so when these thoughts start hitting you, it's like, well, the lie is God is going to have us out on the streets, you know, for 8 million days, you know, or for 8 million years. That's the lie. The truth is I've never seen the righteous forsaken and vacant bread. And so it's like, he'll take care of you. You might be on a neighbor's couch for a couple of days or somebody you know or whatever but it's like he's taking care of that you know so it's like there there's this piece where it's like uh there's this part for us though where it's like yeah we can start to tend to just meditate on the problem or meditate on what's wrong and i think that is the subtle exactly you know the subtle spiritual attack like why would paul then write like hey yo meditate on this you know whatever is ju true, just, honorable, noble, righteous, pure, worthy of praise, you know, think on these things. And, and why does he say, think about it? You know, it's like, cause it's that battle rages, you know, um, in the mind, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and then, uh, I think, or yeah, those, I think a lot of those battles happen for us in particular in the Western culture, they start up here, you know, and, uh, but yes, it, absolutely. But it's not to dismiss like a demon uh, showing up you know, in your home or messing with something in your house. I remember, you know, being one um, with the, was with the pastor and uh, this guy, I mean, he was like a spiritual giant, dude, spiritual giant, New York cat, you know, Jamaican, like you just gangster, you know, like, you know, you know, you know, everybody's no fear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got, yeah. We, uh, but we know in Jamaica, y'all don't play when it comes to Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, this guy, man, they call like, hey, everything's crazy at our house. You know, our daughter, we think has a demon in her and this stuff. Would you come and pray? And, uh, you know, I remember him telling me, just watch. 
and uh, and this man gets to the house. We walk up, get to the house, and the little girl opens the door. And as the pat this guy, my buddy, as he's getting ready to step into the house, bro, and the little girl's down the hallway. Excuse me. So the door opens. Little girl's down the hallway. As the dude steps into the house, it's like a little mini earthquake. Things just the house just begins to shake. It was the craziest thing I ever experienced. And then every cabinet, every door, everything, they just everything opened up in the house. And I'm bro, I can't lie, I'm shook. You know, I'm behind him. I am shook it. You know, I'm like, do we go? You know what I mean? Like, I've seen this, this little, you know, and uh, but it was crazy uh watching him because uh he didn't talk with this demon. You know, oh, you know what? Him. That's why I think I, I've seen like these TikToks and these YouTube where they'll ask the demon questions. You know, during a deliverance, don't. He's not going to tell you the truth, and that's how you yeah. get drawn in. Yes, like he's a liar. He's up there lie. They lie. No. Like, why am I wasting? Our, my our, time? our job is to allow the Lord to use us as that vessel to yes. push it out. In his name, yes. because the man is not the exorcist or the deliverer. Yep. He is. Yes. Yes. And stop interrogating. Yes. Yeah, like, what are we doing? I don't want to, I'm not trying to have a conversation with a demon for 99 hours. I want to talk to any He's going to lie to you. Yeah. He's going to lie to you. Anytime we've encountered that stuff, we always try to get the person. You know, we try and to that's, the and, and that, in fact, in truth, to me, is divination. It's the same thing. Yeah. What what do mediums and fortune tellers, you know, speak of? They're speaking of dead spirits. No, they're not. No. The dead are in rest. Yeah. They're either in heaven with the Lord or yep. not. <laughs> and, and correct. And yep. at the end of the day, what you're consulting with, you don't want to consult. Yeah. He's a pure liar. It's his job is to draw you in. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen that. And honestly, it it appalls me. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. see them and they have their hand on the forehead and they're like, in, in the name of Jesus, answer me. No, it's not your nah, job bro. to interrogate. Yeah, no, nah, bro. You want to get you're, that. You're a vessel for the Lord. Help that person. Get it yes. out. Yes. And leave it alone. Yeah, because for me, don't I'm like, engage, don't battle, and that. See, that's that's the whole point of this series. I want people to understand it's not you fighting. No, no, it's him. Yeah, his grace and his love, and yes. your faith yes. in him. Yes, like the ultimate all... exorcist is Jesus. Yes, that's where it ends. Yes, because I'm like, look at all the tools he gave us they're all outside of us tools like the word that we have you know giving us the word that's outside of us that's god's word giving us his holy spirit god himself dwelling inside of us and it's like these are the pieces i need for battle you know and, right. and provides everything else because like i think about the stuff and that's what I'm, Ephesians is the sword yeah. of truth the, the 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 bell the helmet all of it Notice it's not for you to attack. At the end, it ends with stand your ground. Yeah. Yeah. And you stand that ground in truth and in faith. And the yeah. Lord fights for you. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. Anyway, so going back to it, it's like, yeah, those things are all outside of us. Those, those you know, and, and they're all really like assurance things. But uh, um, before I lose this thought, going back to like this demon possessed person and not encountering the demon, not talking with the demon, speaking with the demon, especially when a person is possessed. It's like at the end of the day, what you, the best way to help them is, you know, is to make sure that the Holy spirit is going to take up residence within them. Then it's not, it's not, right. you can be oppressed and at least you got the spirit battling, you know, you can battle, you know? And so it's like, to me, yeah, I feel like whenever people are like, okay, you know, I do this, I, I find this one, I find this one. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, the church I was at before, they're like, you know, you bind this strong man, you got to bind this man and then bind this one, and then you remove him out. It's, it's all these steps. And, uh, you know, I'm, it's like, you know, bro, because I remember I asked the guy, like, how, what do you do, dog? Like, what do you do? You know, he's kind of, 
And he was like, bro, what did Jesus do? You know, and he's like, it's like, it's all his power, you know, his power. Shut up, come out. That's kind of it. He's like, I just try to talk to the person, speak, speak, speak scripture, you know. And um, and so, but it's like, you know, there was never any plan. It was like, yeah, you're like talking with the demon, trying to remove the demon, but there's never any plan on this person's salvation, you know, because one of the things that he talks about in the armor is he says the helmet of salvation. And, you know, it's like, you know, in battle and in war, you know, your head was the most important thing. And, you know, I mean, of course, your chest, protecting all that, but like, dude, you get your head hit or whatever, you knock yeah. out a battle, you can get killed. And um, <clears throat> so I was thinking about that because it's like, why does he tell you like, man, then assure your head with salvation, you know? Like, make sure, like, you are, that you, you're like, hey, so as the battle is raging or the war comes, what will he say? You're not a Christian, you know, like. Leading, ba yeah. leading back to revelations, deception. Yep, yep. Many yep. followers will, will see the Antichrist and will think if they don't know the truth. Yep. It all goes back to the truth. It does. Yep, yep. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. And so. I feel like yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like you know. So when it comes to spiritual warfare, it's like man, there is a lot out there. To uh, you know, it definitely is very real. Demons are way stronger than we we could ever be in our own flesh. But it's like man, the tools that he's given us. You know, it's like dude, if we know that truth, we study that truth, we live. That, I'm telling you, like you come back with the truth. You know, how do you fight any lie? Like spiritual warfare, a lot of times. Those are lies. How you combat it is with the truth, you know, and uh, and, and then the the ones that you can't get in there with precision when you don't know, you know exactly what is going on. You don't know the verse of scripture. That's why I feel like, uh, you know, so to speak, since we just had May Fourth yesterday, you know, you use the force, which is prayer. You know, the power. Of prayer Amen. And that prayer team, because there's sometimes, you know, you were saying there's things going on, and you're like, bro, we gotta pray. You know, let's just yeah. pray. Know? because even uh what was the one uh, uh the demon possessed boy and the disciples couldn't do it then they said how could you get this one out he's like man some only come out through fasting and praying and yeah. uh, I, and i remember we had a, a friends of ours they are uh these two guys they're missionaries and they uh god has it on them where they go and start churches so they got a church in haiti a church in africa and uh a, a church in india and um excuse me, near India, I can't remember the exact city now, but um, in that place there, they, there was a demon-possessed person in that village who had gone around and bothered people in the village, and they knew this cat, you know, he grew up normal, you know, and then boom, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was, I mean, like, exact like how stuff you would read about in scriptures really happening, terrorizing people, living away from their home, and uh, so the people asked, like, since you're here from the church, is there anything you could do? You know, and uh, he was like, bro, this was my first time really like in anything like this. And he's like, you know, we just try. He's like, and the demon would like start lying and like, you know, like grabbing her, like grabbing this girl herself, making her like harm herself and all these things. We try to hold her down so she wouldn't harm herself. And uh, and he's like, he's like, but we would just try to talk with her, you know, and like we try to get with her. And like, you know, he's like, it was crazy. You could see those whole interaction and he's like dude and he said literally for 24 hours the village and everyone came outside they could hear the screaming for 24 hours they were in there praying and fasting and uh they took shifts he was saying like him and his boy and a couple other people like praying you know he was like dude it was crazy and um but that's all that, like there was no you know they were reading scripture but praying over her talking to her trying to talk with her pray for her and at the end of those 24 hours, you know, this demon left and um, this girl, you know, uh, she, in the end of that, you know, the whole point why it happened was like, at the end of that was like, yeah, I confess Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, you know, and you believe in Jesus Christ, you know, and the demon left, you know, and, uh, and I mean, they, like, so, I mean, her body and everything was still all marked up and scarred up, you know. But uh, uh, she had that sound mind. I think about the man in Mark 5 who had those demons. And uh, when, the, when the people came back, they saw him wearing clothes and in his right mind, you know? And it's like, that's what happened with this person. But, um, but it was like these guys, when they could not get in there with truth per se, they didn't know exactly what, like how to deal with it. 
Yeah. When you don't, when you don't know the truth, it's like a, a kid swinging a sword. Doesn't mean you're hitting air. Yeah. You're hitting air. Yeah. It's got to be precise. Yeah. Like a soldier. Yes, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I could not agree more. And so, yeah, man, I, you know, I think, uh, it's definitely not a, uh, you know, cause it could, yeah, you could look into it all for days, you know, but I think there's something to be said, the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. And then he tells us the weapons that we're to use to withstand the schemes of the devil. And uh, I love what you keep saying and reiterating, like on one hand, he's like, you'll stand your ground. It's you not you know, like combating this. You know? we're, not, we're, we're not the soldiers, yes. you know, and I hear that frame of mind and don't get me wrong. You know, it's admirable. It's not a bad thing, but you have to know your place. Yeah, this is it's God, and He doesn't He doesn't need us to fight His battles. Right. What He needs us to do is, out of our free will and our own volition, subjugate our will to Him, trust in the truth, have faith, and let Him do. Amen. Amen. 